Hello. Welcome to Wyverns and Weirdos Journey Home. As always, I am your Dungeon Master, Darby, and joining me as always are Zoe playing Sevia, Emily playing Beatrice, Laura playing Conrad, Mitch playing Exley, and Johanna playing Fall. Let's jump into it. So, where we last left off, the party found themselves at the entrance to the tomb um, and found three separate entrances. One of them with, uh, or two entrances and a kind of alcove with uh, statues of nine beasts. Um, one of the entrances had a, uh, bo both entrances had alcoves on the door, or not alcoves, like, uh, indents on the doors where, uh, where something could potentially be placed in them. And by, by one of the, uh, entryways, there were nine stone cubes with beasts carved onto them. So, which entrance would you like to attempt first? The left or the, or the, the east or the west? Did the east have an entrance, or was it just like a... The east, the east was, uh, just... so the north, the northern. Okay. Um. Like the northern, uh, opening is an entrance. Okay. Can actually do a, have a bit of a think about what these creatures might represent? And if, like, there's a definite correlation between the, what we assume are, like, keys or something to the statues on the right yeah so um yeah the the yeah the car the carvings do look to comparing them um match up one to one with the the creatures represented on the statues um Excellent. we'll relay this to the rest of the group. Um, say, so. <clears throat> there appears to be a correlation between these pieces and the statues on the eastern hallway. Perhaps, if we are to investigate these statues, we can find out where they are meant to go and open this door. That's a like, good point. The door does, and kind of will, I guess, double check the door to make sure it doesn't actually just open normally like a regular door. Yeah, it uh, probably good to do. But she will investigate because he is good at getting into places he's not yeah. allowed to be in. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess a roll me an investigation check. Ooh, okay. Seven. Seven. Um, oh, like, oh, this is something Conrad's good at. The dice, <laughs> actually, no. Mm. Um, yeah, the door. Not the, this door. Yeah, the 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 yeah, the door. It looks like it will oh. open, but it won't just push open right now. It needs. So Carlo tries to budge it a bit. He's like. Yes, no, it's not opening its on its own, so uh, I think it's a good, um, a good hypothesis, which we should investigate. Crime leading, of course. As he returns to stand kind of like, oh, literally, like, he stands like there with his hands on his hips next to, next to Exley. He looks at Prime. 
uh, Exley will uh, ask Prime to make slowly make his way down the um, hallway with the statues in it, yeah. stopping just after the first couple. Okay. <laughs> Can he fit? Yeah, so, so so he cannot move at his full speed there, but he can kind of squeeze through. Okay. And I guess, so, um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to adjust these in the uh, display to show you how they kind of line up uh, in the gallery here. So then we have, um, where is it? So feel feel free to uh, start listing theories as I set this up. Well, um, there is potential for there to be some form of indication on the statues to show where these keys may be placed. Alternatively, maybe understanding what these creatures are may also warrant some form of... This is no point. But makes sense. A little test. I hope it's something easy like just put the flux in the same order as they are in the hallway. That would be nice. Hmm. Yes, but do we then do we then have to do the same thing with both doors? Yeah, true. Because are there not enough blocks for both doors? No, there is. There are nine blocks. There are nine indents in the uh, in this door. Only eight in the other. <laughs> and no blocks by the other door. No. Okay. So if we were to do both doors, we would have to use the same blocks for each one. Mm. Potentially make new blocks. The logical, easy conclusion is that we simply place them in this grid in the same order they appear in the statue lineup. The question is just where we start, because it doesn't exactly line up. Unless there is some meaning as to why they are stationed across from each other with that flailing snail fellow on his own at the back that might indicate the particular order we need to place them in. Hmm. Uh, the other element that I will remind you that you have in your knowledge is there was the, uh, the poem of sorts uh, inscribed onto the uh, glass stalag uh, stalagmite. Um, the enemies oppose. One stands between them. In darkness it hides. Don the mask will be seen. Speak no truth to the doomed child. The keys turn on the inside only. Oh. Is it one of those word puzzles where like this one goes here and uh, enemies <laughs> this Enemies. Okay. Okay, so... Well, if we are to logically connect these two things, assume they are meant to be connected, there is a logical conclusion here that any creature lined up with another is an enemy of the other. And the flailing fellow yes. is the neutral party. In darkness it hides. So perhaps this uh, snail, the one in the middle, who stands between them, should go in the middle spot and the enemies on opposing sides with the snail in between. That Maybe. would work. Depends on the direction and in the grid that it stands. But that would certainly make sense. Please turn on the inside. Don't the mask will be seen. Mm. Do, do... Must we hide our faces while we do this puzzle? Mm. 
two enemies, the enemies oppose. One stands between them. In darkness, it hides. Entirely possible that uh, not all of these lines refer to the one puzzle. Two. Yes, but it might also be possible that all of them refer to the one puzzle by yes. the same logic. It's very confusing on their part. They should have made separate poems. Agreed. They probably. Get a different pillar to write the rest on if it doesn't relate to the same thing. Bad construction, really. I mean, see, prophecy we got in Barovia was all in one go. This is true. Mm. True, true, but that's all way to do it. And yet. Hmm. Oral indeed. Um, alright. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, if this poem relates, if all of the poem relates to the one puzzle, then we have a lot of uh, issues we must uh, hmm. try to work out before we start placing these in the cubes, such as how to hide our faces and whether or not one of us is indeed a doomed child. Um, the only thing that makes me think it could be connected is the idea of the keys turn on the inside only could be an indicator of the direction in which we place the enemies. Like, yes, we correlate them opposite, but do we enter them clockwise, counterclockwise? Well, that doesn't make sense. It's a square. Hmm. This is difficult. If this were a chess match, I'd be, this would be easy. A logic puzzle like this it reminds me of being back home and tutors trying to keep me interested. Mm-hmm. I can relate to that. Yeah, chess is quite, yeah, chess is kind of fun. Like, I don't know, they move in such weird directions and everything, but like then these kinds of things are so annoying. Yes, well, and chess has HP, has a particular way it moves that makes sense. Yeah, it has like set rules. It's not like you have to like kind of deter like interpret like what kind of like rules they've made up based on like precisely. Nothing. Yes. Ah, uh, well, mm, it's an auto chess match. Um, all right. Uh, oh god. Um, I might. Shall we may I just investigate further. Then let's go to step forward and have a look at the. Creatures. Which creatures are you talking? The one, the statues, or the ones on the? Whatever we're closest to, Darby. I unfortunately have already lost my bearings on what we're doing. So, whatever we're closest at, that would make okay. sense for him to look if... at. Um. So, if you're at the door, the the cubes would be the closer. Cool. I inspect the cubes. Anything interesting or amiss about them? Do any of them look more worn down? Uh, no, they all they all seem to be the same kind of in the same kind of state. Uh, you do notice that they do seem to have what appear to be names on them as well. Ooh, what are the names? Uh, so the Almirage. So the. Uh, um, actually, I'll, I'll do these in the order that they're on here. So, the, uh, the Zorbo, which is like level drop bear, is Oberlaka. Then, going to its right, uh, the, the snake-like creature, uh, is, which is Jaculi, is Moa. Then we've got the, uh, the little... Uh, bunny with a with a unicorn like horn that is an almirage known as Ijin. Um, then we have uh, opposite them we have Wongo is the name which is the Sioux monster which is like a little demonic monkey um, then we have the Frokemoth which is giant monster frog uh, is Kubazan then opposite Cooper's arm, we have the Eblis, which is like a water bird type uh, creature, which is a Papa Zotl. Um, then next we have the almost displacer beast looking thing, which is the uh, the Jacula. No, Kamadan, sorry. 
uh, which is Shigambi, then the the Grung, so frog like humanoid, is Nang Nang, and then finally the Flail Snail is Unk. Conrad communicates this to the rest of the group as he writes them down. Those names. Do those names mean anything to anyone? Nothing to me. Hmm. Okay, um. Then. Any. S U. Then I. Hmm. Any kind of check that could be rolled to see if these names mean anything to anyone? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> they're, not, they're not anything that would be known to uh, those from the air law. Right. Okay. Um, are they in the order of like what they're like in the passage? Maybe we can move yes. them into that order? So the order that I put them in on your screens, yes, is currently... Uh, like oh okay, that never order. mind. But they are not they are not laid out on the the wall like that. Okay. Yet, you can certainly try. I guess to I do, do that, that. and okay. then I realize it makes no, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> well, I'm like oh my. <laughs> so what? The enemies pause and one stands between them. What if the snail thing goes in the middle there yeah. is a way there is a way of doing it to make them all so they oppose their opposite their enemy indeed mm. it is just a matter of where to start perhaps start at the beginning alphabetically okay I only have the words written of that were written under them. I don't know any of these creatures. I haven't seen come across them in my time on Earth. Neither have I, but... If it's a loop, does it matter? <laughs> says, uh, says dragon bait wall yeah. via smell. <laughs> um, if no one opposes, we could potentially just try. I think we should try. Be um, my guest. Prime can certainly people. try. Uh, Exley will walk up to the little stone pillar things. Yeah. The, the slabs. Um, and put the snail in the middle slot yes um and i'm just working out names to pictures on who would go oh i can probably just arrange them on the map yes yeah. right. um so maybe indicate who you're putting Beatrice. opposite for oh yes um, for so, audio listeners but, yes okay. so all of the opposite ones essentially what exley is doing now um is starting from the top left um, the first two statues that are facing each other, uh, he is putting one in the top left and one in the bottom right, so that the snail is in the middle. Um, the next lot of two statues he is putting on the top and the bottom, so the snail is still in the middle. The next one is uh, top right, bottom left, so again, snail is still in the middle. And then one on the right, one on the left, so the snail is still in the middle. Um, the last one, he will, after he's put, an ev put everything into place, uh, he will give the last one to Prime to attempt to get him to put it in. And he will stand a respectful distance back. Okay. Mm. Beatrice pulls her hood up. <laughs> the nine cubes upon the last one being placed in glare with light, then disappear. Growling like an angry beast, the slab begins to slide up into the ceiling. And you can see the door. The doorway is open. Um, 
Well, good job, Exley. Uh, 42. Yeah. I, I will note, yes, we are getting to a point where it's going to be quite dark. So, if folks have any source of light. So basically, when we look into this entrance, we like can't see anything if we don't have dark. You, you can dark see, you can see a bit as light from outside bleeds in, but yeah. beyond that, yeah, no. Uh, fall, you can see in shades of grey. Uh, you cannot see in colour when there is no source of light. Uh, Beatrice pulls the sun sword out. Okay. And lights it up. All right. Let's um, let's put a. And um, my D and D Beyond is going very strange. So I'm just trying to work out exactly how much what, what reach the light has. Yeah. Um, just move. at the same time, uh, Sevia is going to uh, pull out her quarterstaff. She's gonna, um, like, uh, it's very short. She's gonna just kind of tap it on the ground once and she's gonna uh, cast light on her quarterstaff. Okay. And then hold that aloft to use as a torch. Alright. So that should uh, last Let's drag an the hour. Spell onto you. Um, it lasts an hour, casts bright light in a 20 foot radius and dim light in a further okay. 20 feet. Is that similar to what the sun sword does? I think that is very similar to what I think it's sends out light it's 30 feet and dim light up to 60 i think it's either that or 15 feet and 30 feet i'm just trying to uh, it doesn't actually have anything here i'm just trying to find it again so because uh, it has the sentience the sun sword is a sentient chaotic good weapon with intelligence um, it has hearing and normal vision out to a range of 60 feet. So the sword itself mm. has that. Um, uh, let me try to find it. But you you should... Oh, uh, same properties of a sunblade. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to find a sunblade. So I can see yes. what it says. Um, Yes. So we have the sources of light now. Uh, we have two sources of light, and you'll note that you'll be able to see in. You'll actually be able to see there in it is. color now on the map. Uh, I've worked it out. Yes. Uh, sun sword is bright light in a 15 foot radius and dim light for an extra 15 feet. Okay. So 15, 15. Okay. Yeah. I will adjust that. Should be right. All right. So we have two sources of light between Beatrice and Sevia. Um, all right. Um, yeah. So another slab blocks the hallway twenty feet beyond the first door. An iron lever is set into the door's surface with a graven stone skull leering down from above. Are people entering the uh the area? Prime is. Yeah. Uh and then if nothing happens to him, I guess Exley will follow. Yeah, and then Conrad will I will note Conrad has 
pulled out a lantern from his bag, which is just kind yep. of affixed to his hip, but he doesn't have it turned on doesn't yet. Doesn't have it turned on yet. Okay. He's got like a little like vial, um, the oil, the flask, but he hasn't put it on yet. And he just kind of like, cursory looks on from behind Exley. Not hiding behind him, obviously. Corrin's a big boy, but like, you know, just yeah. standing from a respectful distance from Prime. Okay. Before we continue, it should be noted that the first two lines of the second paragraph mm. were to be taken very literally. Perhaps the third should also be. I believe there may be danger up ahead. We should be aware. Yes, does mention hiding and darkness and avoiding being seen, so we yes. should be very wary. Yes. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yes, Exley will investigate the lever. Mm. Not like touching it or anything. All right. Have a um, look at that end of the skull. So is, every, is everyone in the... The, this section of chamber now. Yes. All right. Cautiously. All right. mm. Also um, a respectable, not hiding distance behind Prime and Exley. Okay. Um, there is. It's a tight fit for everyone, but it is. It is possible. Technically. <laughs> everyone squeezing in there. Yeah. Beatrice waits at the the first sort of drop down, just holding the sword okay. so that it emits light. All right, the people. All right. Uh, so, as you're all in there, um, the skull's jaws creak open, and a skeletal hand holding a crystal hourglass-style timer emerges from within, with a click. The timer rotates and Stan starts to trickle into its lower globe. Ten. Nine. Eight. Uh, <laughs> seven. What, what does the lever look like? Six. Sevia. Uh, it is. It is a lever. Four. A uh, cool lever. Three. <laughs> so the uh, the floor. Uh, between the two doors uh, splits open <laughs> along a central seam. Uh, I need everyone um, to roll me a dexterity saving throw, please. Except for Beatrice, I'm assuming, who didn't go in there. Did Beatrice not go in there? Beatrice was, yeah, Beatrice was standing just inside the door. The, the just third, inside. The first door. Yeah. Just yeah. So Beatrice is in there then. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. Mm. Uh, that's a seventeen for Sevia. Okay, you managed to get a hold of uh of. Actually, you're you're a fair way back too, so you managed to get a hold of like the 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 back of the door, uh, as as the floor gives way below you. Uh, Beatrice. Hang on. Uh, uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah, you are able to uh, get purchase to not fall. Um, <laughs> With one hand yeah. and the other, yeah. I still hold the sword. Uh, Four. Thirteen. Thirteen. You find yourself falling down, seeing these spikes below you. Can I grab him? Uh, what did as you? My he- as my help action. What did you? What did you roll for your deck save? Twenty six, oh. my friend. Twenty six. You know what? For that level of success, I will let you roll me a. Strength No. Um, so you grab oh, on gosh. to like the wall with one hand, and I will let you roll me another deck saving throw to reach out for fall. Okay. Hey. 
Um, so deck saving throw, 24. 24. So you reach out to the wall with one, with one hand and simultaneously reach for the, quite aptly, falling, fall, um, with the other and hold on tight. Exley. Yeah. Grab his arm. Uh, Exley got an 18, Prime got a 2. Okay. So Prime has a negative 2 modifier. Exley, you, you're able to, uh, yeah, uh, again, okay, grab onto the wall. Um, I'm gonna check, and, yeah, Prime is gonna fall down to the ground. Um, uh, yeah, Dragon Bait and Artis are going to... Uh, succeed, I believe. Yes. Um, but yeah. So as uh, as Prime hits the spikes, um, they take. Hmm. Okay. This this could be a lot of damage here. So they take just just from the just from the fall damage. The, down, isn't it? Uh, it is. It is a uh, twenty feet, but it is the damage is slightly different to regular fall damage for this one. Um, it is two d ten rather than two d six. So that is twelve points of bludgeoning damage. He doesn't have any. Or Prime doesn't have any special things with magical versus not magical. Uh, no, only poison. So that is, so starting with 12 points of bludgeoning damage, uh, they are also impaled on three spikes as they land. Uh, I don't want to say this, but he is a large creature. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, which is, which is, uh... Uh, so that's an additional, oh, one of those was a four, that's an additional six spikes. So six, seven, eight, nine. So, <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> nine. This is... The noises that Darby is making. Right now. So while this is all kind of happening and like everyone's like trying to grab hold of stuff, that we just hear this big <laughs> squelch noise. Quite <laughs> possibly. I mean, regardless, we're going to hear yeah. it. It just depends on how much of a um, squelch. Everyone just looks oh, down. Oh, there's, there's a couple of big numbers <laughs> in here, and this is only some Sorry, of the. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> All right, so that is... I can't use the help action again yes. in a second round, a hypothetical round. It's, it's all in the same moment. <laughs> you have one reaction. That's all right. Um, I say four, I suppose. So that is... So that is 40 points of piercing damage. Plus... Uh... An additional nine. So that was nine d six, and there is an additional nine d ten of. Actually, no, he's immune to poison, isn't he? He is immune to poison, yes. Okay, so he doesn't take any of the poison damage. Which, okay, that's convenient. Okay, but yeah, Prime is not in a good state. So he takes 52 points of damage total? Yeah, he is current. So, yeah, 52 Ow. points of damage total. Prime is looking pretty shaky, guys. While you're all oh, hanging on for dear life. Apologies. Oh no, how awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Um, so, in more quick assessment, Conrad looks around at anywhere that can get him. I was pulled up again. Oh, 
while he's trying to hold on to fall. Beatrice was fairly close to the doorway. Is she able to sort of throw the sun sword up and then get up on the lead, back up on the like ledge? Uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say. And then, and then she can try and pull Sevia uh, up, I'd, who I believe I'd, was next to her. I'd say so, yes. So, yeah, Beatrice yeah. sort of climbs out and then turns around and reaches down. Sevia, give me, give me your hands. Uh, okay. And she like very uh Yeah, no, she she climbs up but she is also like looking around trying to see if there's a way for her to help the other two who are a little further in and Exley as well, who is further in again. <laughs> um The other door opened or no? I uh, I'm just double checking that. Um, don't believe it is. All that and the door story. Um, and and the, uh, the the crystal hourglass has really, like been taken back into the skull's jaw. Ah. Uh, um. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to have something. I have to have something. Uh... The le- the lever is in the position it's been moved to. Um, yeah. But if we close it, we might crush their little bodies. Yeah. Okay. Can See anyone me- climb out at this point? Um. Uh, Beatrice has already so Beatrice climbed, has out. climbed yeah. out. She already has. She's but, helped. Yeah. No one She's else is able to climb at the moment. She's no helping Sevia. Okay. Yeah, well, it's cool. But um, And the other thing is, too, like, it is kind of, hi- like, it didn't just drop down, it hinged down. So there's there was a gap in the center, and... Still. So you, you would probably be able to... If it, assuming resetting the lever caused it to close, there would be mm. opportunity to essentially. Actually, can you get primed? Can prime reach the hinge? Uh, prime's what twenty feet down or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do not believe he has that capability. Perhaps I can, um, as actually was fairly close to the lever. Um, Potentially to um, can he reach the lever from where he is? Um, actually, yeah. Uh, yes, I would say, especially with his height, he he has a quite a good reach. And otherwise, I assume kind of be near the lever itself. Mm. Um, yes, it's like yeah. Uh, it, it might, if we turn it again, it might come back up. If Prime might be able to use the momentum to get up as well. I'm sort of just spitballing here at the moment. I'm trying not to die myself. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I'd have to find another the... way of getting it back. How wide are the, the floor panels? Like, actually, wouldn't. Uh, sorry, a Prime wouldn't be able to like grab hold of them, would he? Uh, he might be. Can he give it a go? Actually, we'll instruct Prime to. Um, what are the spikes made out of? Are uh, they stone or wood? They are iron. Okay. Um, Excel will instruct Prime to attempt to reach up for the the floor. All right. He does so. All right, everyone get ready. We hope for this will work. And then kind of of like flexes the grip he has on fall. Um, And then kind of like tries to like hoist fall up a bit and just just to like 
in a very platonic because they are brothers way um <laughs> kind of like gets him to like hold on to his waist or something like that so then he has the use of his other arm so he kind of like slings full up a bit okay Falls an acrobat, so they would be able to do that. I yeah. Guess too. yeah, yeah. And I think and Paul then, is probably uh, trying to like keep like keep their feet against the wall, like abseiling yeah. before trying to figure out how to do that. And thing. then yeah. Conrad grabs a dagger from his little like bandolier, and then um, still like he's doing quite a lot of effort to hold on himself. Looks at um, Exley and at Beatrice and Sevi who are kind of hovering there, um, and goes. All right, not sure how fast this will be. Get ready. Are we ready? Perhaps if we try and do it slowly, there may be some way of salvaging Prime. All right, then, um... I'll... I can reach to try and manipulate it. I mean, if you want to focus the... on... Our care is the living people just... Bring it back up! I... CB is panicking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Our care is comrade in full. We can think about Prime later. Get the floor back up now! Conrad and full. Um, and you... It's, I keep forgetting X. <laughs> yeah. That's me, not CB. I'm sorry. He um, would say all of you. <laughs> Exley's going to reach up to the lever and attempt to slowly move it up. Okay. In the hopes of potentially stopping it halfway and maybe getting the floor there moving is up slower. No effect. Is it working? Does not appear. Exley will raise the full lever. Okay. The, um, yeah, so the door, uh, the, the floor starts closing. Um, I am going to give, uh, give Prime a, we'll call, we'll call it an athletics check. Um, in order to climb up in time to, uh, I will, uh, I will say so, with advantage, because you would have presumably given them the order to, to get out as soon as, like, to climb up. Yeah. Help mm -hmm. action would also trigger it. Mm. Alright. Uh, that's just adding his strength, yes? Yes. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, so that is, I'm going to call that a success, but with a cost. Um, so he's going to take, he manages to climb, um, and is almost out, but takes um, eight bludgeoning damage as the... Uh, as the floor, floor closes shut on his foot, severing it from his ankle. Um, so he takes eight damage and he, his movement speed is uh, going to be decreased. Um, so he will be at half movement until you can, I guess, replace his... Uh, Replace his foot, which, considering he is practically a golem anyway, is possible should you find a suitable foot. Or otherwise replace it. I presume the others get up then as well? Yes, and uh, everyone is... Uh, otherwise easily able to, uh, to get back to the, onto the ground. Yeah. Cause, yeah, Fall and Conrad were and by the lever anyway yeah. at that point, so I guess he'd be right next to Exley if he's and moved over there. Th and as the floor the clicks back into place, in the, the skull's uh, jaw creaks yeah. open again, and the skeletal hand, the skeletal hand the crystal hourglass style timer 
re-emerges. There is a click, the timer rotates, and sand starts to trickle into its lower globe again. One. Oh, two. Come on. Okay, back, back, back. Three. Perhaps we four, just have to wait it out. Five. Is the other door closed six, or not yet? Yes, it is closed. Seven. Oh, it's closed. Okay. So we're, we're trapped there. Okay. Um, Nine. Do we need to turn the lights off? Ten. In darkness, it hides? The door opens on the opposite side, leading into the tomb. No, because we don't want it to hide. We want to be able to see it. It opened. Yes, the door has... Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the door has opened. Uh, Exley will assist Prime with moving into the room. Okay. And we'll prop him up against a wall. All right. Thank you, Conrad. That was really quick thinking, and you got me just in time. Thank you. All right. Uh, Conrad's probably um, like the yeah. second that like the floor yeah. like moved back up again would have just like uh, shake like just flopped on the ground and like just shook his arm out <laughs> just <laughs> lay flat on his back. Oh, even though there's not that much space, um, as white as a sheet. Um, but yeah, he kind of <laughs> just kind of just lost there for like no problem. Quick, right. quick reflex. Yes, definitely. <sighs> so, so, where exactly are you propping up Prime? And where is ev everyone? What are we looking at? Oh. Um, <clears throat> if there's room to get past, he would just put Prime, like, here on the wall. Okay. Um, so, Prime's, uh, remaining foot, uh, finds rest on a, uh, pressure plate, uh, triggering, uh, forced poison darts to shoot out from spring-loaded tubes in the wall, um, so, each of these is going to make an attack against either you or Prime, so I'm going to go mm -hmm. two to each. And it would just be the two of us up there, yes? Uh, at Stop this point, if, you're, if you are okay. doing that before everyone else piles out of the room? He would be, yes. yes. Okay, so, um, what is it? Plus eight. So I think both yeah. of the ones going for Prime would hit, because mm -hmm. only the eight DC. Um, and one would hit you. Uh, no, no, even, no, none, neither would hit you. Um, now... Oh, um, Prime does have an 18 AC as well now. Oh, uh, so it's just one hits then. Okay. I forgot about the arm, uh, the armor. Um, uh, so, uh... Any creature, so because because most of the damage here is poison, just just need to roll the d four for the piercing. So uh, that is a four. So prime takes four points of piercing damage mm -hmm. into his back as he is set on this pressure plate. And as you see, three other darts kind of fly past you and him. And did one of them hit me or no? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. They they both missed you, the two that I was putting past you. Um, I will. Beatrice lift would. Up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I was going to say Beatrice would probably be at the doorway by then and see that and go, oh. Seems like we may need to uh, watch our step. There are pressure plates in the door, okay. in the floor. Be aware. 
Oh, great. <clears throat> Beatrice is going to make her way into the corridor with um, Exley and Prime, but she's going to be checking the floor and the walls very carefully as she does. All right. Roll me a perception check. Um, um, perception 22 22 okay so you are able to identify where the pressure plates are there are three of them um and they are by as you have those little alcoves uh those little holes built into the wall. They are by the uh, bottom left and top left holes, and the uh, second down from the uh, second down on the right side. That second right. down on the right side one was the one that uh, the prime triggered. Uh, Beatrice would relay this information to everyone and tell them to, uh, basically if everyone sticks to the middle, they'll be all right. Was that? Mm. Yeah. More or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just don't, don't More apply. More or less. Just, just don't apply very pressure, light to pressure those, to those three, yeah. uh, panels. Panels. And you'll be fine. Just I'll follow Beatrice's lead. Yeah. <laughs> the others see where it's, take note of where exactly where they step. All right. Um, uh, as she's walking through, um, Sevia is going like, to, as she's walking past, like pat both Conrad and Flow on the shoulders and be like, Good job, and then she's going to walk through and go up to Exley, being very careful not to step on the little pressure plate. She's gonna have like a weird little look on her face and she's going to say, Can he take healing? He cannot. Right. I'd hope to help. You cannot. I am sorry, Exley. Such is life. I meant it. You're... You're one of us. And he was one of me. Give me a moment, please, Sylvia. Certainly. Off she goes. So, take a moment to describe the uh, area as you follow through this corridor. Uh, the corridor extends beyond the second door. Uh, tree roots hang from the sagging ceiling and the air reeks of rot and damp. Ahead, a bas-relief carving of a bearded devil's face adorns the wall at a T-shaped intersection. The devil's open mouth is a well of utter darkness. Some of you, I believe, would recognize this as a darkness spell. Oh, this like is this is something you would definitely recognize as it is an effect that you are able to oh. produce innately yourself. Oh, excellent. Um, okay. Oh, well. I think there's a little darkness spell in its mouth. That's weird. Okay. Mm. 
maybe this is the one, the part of that little uh, riddle that has to do with darkness this time. Fort Light takes out the little notes they took on the thing. There is also to the uh, to the left a rusted iron grate set into the corridor floor. Through its bars, you can see muddy water flowing slowly past. Paul mm -hmm. just like staring intently at like what's written, and then they're going to try to um, use minor illusion to make their face look like the little devil. Okay. On the mask. Does anything happen? Um, no. Well, that was worth a try. Mm. Is it like a visible okay. doorway? In darkness, so it's there high. is there is a uh, oh, no. yeah. So if you're going there, you can see. Is that, is that supposed to be a? Uh, that, that is, I don't know why that's treated as. I think it's supposed to be that great. Okay. Mm. All right. So yeah, there are. This is basically a T intersection. One side leads to. Uh, one side leads to a door. The other leads to uh, to an apparent uh, an apparent um, staircase of sorts. <laughs> so, grand staircase, uh, grand chamber opens ahead on the right side, uh, fifty feet across and plunging down into darkness below. Stone balcony winds around the walls to connect four archways. Other balcony levels are visible below, with corridors radiating off in all directions. To the north, a stone staircase descends to the lower levels. You also see, on the opposite side of the, uh, of the da -da 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 -da, windowsill, um, a skeleton with two daggers and a strange, uh, almost metal uh, carving on its head in the shape of a triangle. In darkness, it um, The fall, you mentioned the mouth. You think that's uh, magic? Yeah, yeah, that's the darkness spell. I can do that too. It's just sitting there. Don the mask or be seen. What if somebody dispels the magic? Sylvia? I can certainly try. Uh, perhaps the best effect uh, we should all stand back. Yeah, because it might if it's hiding in the darkness, would it just come out? It doesn't always mean that it's a living thing. Oh, that's true. No, but if something leaps out immediately, it would probably be better for everyone concerned if we had a little bit of distance. I can certainly cast a spell from a distance. All right. Everyone stand back then. Beatrice is going to stand right in front of it with the sword ready. Uh, Artis is gonna. She's not gonna move back all that far. 
Artist is going to stand back, careful not to be on one of the, uh, the panels. Uh, Fall, you should get behind me. Oh, uh, yes. Sylvia looks around to check where everyone is and okay. yes so everyone make sure that you are uh, accurately represented in your locations on the map before this occurs just in case something happens that requires positions yes Con Conrad is standing um just awkwardly like not within actually space but near there um yeah. still looking quite white um he's also squinting because he still can't see very well yeah. in this area he's just working off the light glancing off other people yeah. um but he just looks yeah very quiet um <clears throat> while everyone was having a conversation actually was taking a quiet moment with prime um and yeah once that's done he will go and stand in the hallway um and darby does that work um this is this is in regards to your message yes. uh yes yes it would okay uh then exit will go and uh, stand at the entrance of the hallway. Okay. Up, um, there. All right. Um, just put prime there. Yeah. I'll just remove prime for now. Um, okay. So. Sevia, you are... <laughs> Casting Dispel Magic on the Darkness. Okay. So. Roll me an intelligence check, because this is beyond the basic DC. Um, uh, 21. 21. So the Darkness is dispelled. Um, which causes... A couple of things. So, we have, uh, it reveals the shadow demon within it. Um, yep. And causes it to, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it emerges once the darkness yeah. is dispelled and is going to attack the nearest person, which according to this is Beatrice. Um, yes, but, she's ready. Yes, so can I get everyone to roll for initiative, please? Oh, bad for Artis and Dragon Bait. Uh, Conrad. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Four. Twenty-three. Three. Exley. Exley is mildly distracted and rolled a seven. Okay. Beatrice. Dirty twenty. Alright. Uh, Sevia. Sixteen. Alright. So, Paul, you won initiative. Okay. Um, I guess yeah, it was approaching uh, Beatrice with a tent to attack. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm going to run up to it. 
and um, I am going to flurry of blows it. All right. Um, while like while looking very pathetic and being like, whoops, that was a mistake. Just go back in. Um, oh no. Now oh, you're. Why are you? You have enough level in Monk that your attacks count as magical, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, roll me to hit four times. Okay. Um, so that is, with the quarter stuff blue, is the 23 to hit? Yeah, that'll hit. And um, the damage is um, eight damage. Eight damage, okay. Then, um, actually, is it is it like tangible? I'm trying to punch a shadow. It it or is it, it is a shadow demon. Oh, so yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of wispy, and exactly. there is a level of intangibility to it, but it is still tangible. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. All right, so I'll try to um, kick it in the knee. Um, that is a twenty-seven to hit. Yeah, twenty-seven will hit. And the uh, damage is a 11 damage. All right. That is that is <laughs> a nasty kick to the knee. Yeah. Uh, third oh, attack. It's, it's third hit. Um, an 18 to hit. 18. Yeah. Uh, that uh, will hit. It's 12 damage. Oh. <laughs> and then the final unarmed strike will punch to the throat. Oh, it's a nat one. Okay. That's a 10 Okay, to hit. that one, that one will miss. Yep. And uh, then, um, yeah, I'll probably just duck down, ducks back one step okay. to disengage as part of that. That's full turn. Go into the defensive stunts. Okay. Um, next is Beatrice. Yes. Um... Firstly, Beatrice is going to use Slayer's Prey and designate the creature, the thing, as uh, uh, my prey. Yep. So, and then she's going to slash at it with the Sun Sword. All right. That's a 17 to hit. That will hit, certainly. Now, now it's... you're going to have to separate out your radiant damage. Or, well, you might have to separate out yes. a couple of things, but it is actually vulnerable to radiant damage. Which means that your radiant damage All does right. double. Uh, you also have four. Okay. To, Fall, oh. you didn't you didn't jump so back, did you? Fall was still there, wasn't it? Yeah, so you will also have sneak attack. Which means I get an extra I think that's You're muted, Johanna. I jumped back like half a block, so I think I'm technically uh, <laughs> still fighting. Oh my god. Oh yes. I love sneak attack so much. Um, all right, so in terms of the sword, that does, um, 10, yeah, 10 damage. Okay. And then all the extras. Oh, that was a great sound. Um. Thirteen damage. Okay. So what was the ten? The ten was your radiant, was it? The ten was the radiant. That's what I rolled. That was what you rolled. So it's doubled to twenty. Um. Because it's one d eight plus five. I rolled five. Yeah. So yeah, twenty. So twenty, and then twenty, what, and then your additional was. And then it was thirteen. Thirteen was the additional. Uh, those. Those don't have a specified type of damage, do they? No, because it's just one uh, slayer's prey and then um, sneak attack. They might actually be technically the same type of damage as the weapon. Ah, oh, okay. Which I think means you eviscerate this thing. 
<laughs> uh, even if it wasn't, you were pretty damn close. But yeah, I, I'm going to double check that for next time. But for now, we will say that that's how it works. Yeah, you, with your insane amount of radiant damage, eviscerate this thing. It did not last long at all. Here we uh, go. Okay. Punches a uh, fall on the shoulder and just sort of nods. <laughs> nice one. Thanks for the help. Um. Right. Uh. Beatrice is then also going to look into the mouth again to see what is left behind after the demon is gone. Okay, so after the demon is gone... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it is just like an empty crawl space. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, so, a few moments later, you, you see the, uh, the, the same, uh, skeleton with the weird triangular head that you saw from before, just, just run madly across the corridor. Uh, like, I'll show you the point where you see it, um, as it runs madly north. Kind of very much like comic relief video game character. Like, yeah, flailing arms, dagger in each hand, triangle carved metal head or stone head. I hate kind of its friends with their little like um horse rider skeleton that we kept finding yes, into. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's friends where we're gonna leave it. <laughs> That's where we're gonna leave it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. See you yeah. next week, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.